Well, hello there and welcome back to the Hull City Fan Central YouTube channel, where today I do have yet another video. And this video, I'll be going over the Hull City squad for the 2022-23 season. So in this video, I'll be going over all of the transfers coming in and out of the club, along with all of the players who are remaining at the club, combining with our first team squad with the departures and arrivals all included in that. So let's get into it with our goalkeepers. So starting off with Nathan Baxter. Nathan Baxter is joining us on loan yet again from Chelsea, making it his successive second season on loan with Hull City. Um, after a fantastic season last season, he hasn't made an appearance yet this season, considering his injury at the start and Matt Ingram's uh, recent form, but he could make an appearance very soon with that squad rotation coming in and also with Matt Ingram letting in quite a few goals in recent games. Alongside that, we do have Matt Ingram, as I've just mentioned. Uh, he's just signed a new contract and will be staying with the club for another few years after his fantastic start to the season. We're very glad to have him. Uh, he's kept us in some of these points where we should have maybe um, conceded goals after pulling out some fantastic saves, um, some of the likes against Coventry and Preston. Um, so, yeah. And we've also got one more keeper. This is a new arrival coming in from Tottenham's Academy. It doesn't look like he's going to make an appearance for the club um, for quite a bit of time, unless something happens a bit like last season where Harvey Cartwright made his, uh, his appearance for the club. But Timothy Lotula, um, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, I might be mistaken on that, but he's joining us from Tottenham's Academy, looking like a very good uh, young prospect, uh, getting a few youth international caps for France um, and also picking out a few appearances for Tottenham's um, under 21 side in the Premier League too and bits like that so he's a very good prospect moving on throughout the years. Okay, so our first defender who is remaining at the club is Louis Coyle. So over this transfer window, he's managed to pick himself up the captain's armband for Hull City, which is a fantastic honour, especially coming from a local lad who has been at the club for a few years now. Um, this making it, I think, his third or fourth successive season at the club, which is a, uh, a fantastic achievement after having... Um, dare I see a, a touch and go last se uh, season last season, uh, but his start to this season has been okay. It's moved a bit slow in some of the pre uh, some of the most recent games, um, but yeah, he's he's going to be like that. He's not really catered to uh, top end championship, bottom end Premier League, but he's there for the captain's armband, a bit similar to Richie Smallwood last season. Moving over to his number three. Callum Elder. So Callum Elder stays with the club again. Um, it's a fantastic um, partnership that Ka Callum Elder, Louis Coyle, uh, but Callum Elder staying with us. As similar to um, Louis Coyle, he's not really catered to uh, this level that we're playing at the moment. But got to keep him at the club there for morality, and also he is a is a very well rounded player. Um, cannot deny from that he has brilliant moments we've seen that in some of the games this season but also in some of the games he has been letting the side down a bit so it's just all with that squad rotation which we'll see with the amount of signings that we have brought in Moving on now to our vice captain, Jacob Greaves. So Jacob Greaves stays with the club as he has been um, produced through our academy system. Um, and yeah, he's now our vice captain, which is an incredible honour, especially for such a young lad like um, Jacob Greaves. S waiting for a call up for the England um, youth national team, um, as it was rumoured to be uh, given with the Keen Lewis Potter um, call up last season. Uh, but it didn't happen and he's still at the club. So possibly if he gets a good run in this season, we could possibly see a call up. Um, but who knows? Time will tell. OK, so the next player I've decided to put in the defenders area, although his um, main staple in this season has been midfield so far with the absence of G. Michael Sarri out on injury. But yes, Alfie Jones, um, he's more of a defender rather than um, a midfielder, but can play both. He's quite versatile in that central of the of the pitch basically um so yeah he's had a he's had a fantastic start to the season he was a bit iffy in the cardiff game but uh, i mean we lost 3-1 so yeah <laughs> but in the rest of the performances i think that he has been one of the players who has been 
definitely shining through after his rocky start to the season last season. His form has just been picking up since then and it's fantastic to see how far he's come since um, the Grant McCann era, if you want to say, call it that. And our second signing that I'll be talking about in this video, Tobias Figueiredo. We picked him up on a free transfer after getting um, kicked out of the Nottingham Forest team. I mean, they've had a lot of transfers in, so they need to get rid of a few players. Uh, so yeah, he's got promotion winning um, credits on his CV, and he now joins us as an experienced centre-back. He's not had the start to the season that he probably would hope for, um, after having a few hit and miss games, but he's just there for the experience. He was what we was lacking last season in the defensive line, uh, is that experience. I was saying it in these videos. We needed an experienced defender, and we've got that in Tobias Figueiredo. So it's a fantastic recruitment from uh, Schotter and Ajun, and I just can't wait to see once he gels into the team, once he finds his rhythm in this whole City squad, where he can take us through that defensive line. Next up, Josh Emmanuel. Josh Emmanuel stays at the squad after uh, not playing for, I think it's over a season now, um, with some personal issues. So I don't want to go into them uh, on this channel because I don't know what he's going through and I don't know um, if that wants to really be shared on the public platforms. But yeah, Josh Emmanuel stays at the club. Uh, it doesn't look like he's going to make an appearance anytime soon uh, with these personal issues that I've been saying. But it's nice to have him staying at the club after having such a brilliant season in our promotion winning season. John McLaughlin is also staying at the club after having, dare I say, a brilliant season last season. Uh, one of the starring players in our defensive line that was was solid defence for majority of the season. Um, pretty much kept us in the league. Um, but yes, Sean McLaughlin, a solid defender, has not made too much of a start uh, this season, apart from having a few appearances in the League Cup and a few times off the bench in the season. But I think that he should maybe make a few appearances, especially once we delve into the season and we need to get their squad rotations in. Sean McLaughlin is a brilliant centre-back and I just can't wait to see him back in the starting eleven. Moving on now to Brandon Fleming. So Brandon Fleming, we probably won't see him for a few more weeks, maybe possibly up to two months after suffering an injury uh, through the preseason trainings. Um, so yeah, he's out for a bit of time, but he's a fantastic player. He's just signed a new contract as well with the club to stay with us for another few years after wanting to get a move to uh, various different clubs, trying to get a push on to Premier League. He's not quite Premier League quality yet. Um, I think he was more looking for a move, a bit similar to Keanu Potter, thinking that he's probably that calibre yet. Uh, he's not quite there after having a fantastic season last season, don't get me wrong. Um, he really shined under Shotter, but I think that he needs another few seasons just to really staple himself as a good footballer, because he's a very young lad, um, and he's come through our academy process, so he just needs a few more seasons to really convince himself that he is at that level, and convince the other clubs. If not, he doesn't stay at the club, and we go on and excel into the Premier League. Um, but yeah, he's a fantastic wing-back, and I just can't wait to see him back from injury. The young player now, Matty Jacobs, retains at the squad after having a hit and miss season last season, not playing that much game time. Um, and he's not played that much game time this season. We don't expect him to. He's more of there as sort of like a reserve player, maybe coming in if there is a very shortage of players. Um, but yeah, Matty Jacobs stays at the club. Uh, not too fond of that, not too disfond of that. He's just existing. And another experienced defender brought into the club, Cyrus Christie. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. He's coming to us on a free transfer after um, getting sent out of the Fulham squad after spending last season on loan at Swansea. So he's a fantastically experienced right wing back, right midfielder. He's gone into the defenders list because he's catered within the squad as a defender, uh, but he can play in various different positions up um, that right-hand side, even moving into a bit more of the centre of the park if needed. But he's a fantastic player, obviously got double promotion winning um, qualities into his CV with Fulham, uh, so he's a fantastic player. He had a solid performance um, in that first in his first full-on start for Hull City against um against Cardiff. Unfortunately, we did lose that game, but he had uh, one of the one of the shining performances, especially down that right-hand side, who was doing quite a bit of bits. And we can see that he wants to play a bit more in field than what it was catered to that night. So maybe that gets adapted into the squad through Shotter's plans. 
through his um, work throughout training. Um, but yeah, just got to see where he comes with the squad because it seems to be a very, very experienced player who can do some bits with the squad. Moving into our midfielders, now we do have Ozan Tufan. Yes, the man who got rejected by Watford last season after playing, I think, 10 games and labelled the laziest footballer in the world has now scored two goals for Hull City and is currently injured, we know, uh, but is possibly coming back for the Sheffield United game. Uh, it's a bit 50-50 on that at the moment, but definitely will be making an appearance within the next few games. So he's a fantastic midfielder, uh, produced some fantastic moments this season, scoring a penalty, and also that goal from um, our draw against Burnley at Turf Moor. So he's a fantastic player. He's definitely not this lazy footballer that Watford think he is. He's much more than that. He's a fantastic player. And I just can't wait to see him excel under this new um, Shotter regime. And he's just perfect for this squad. And he's going to do well. I'm telling you right now, he's going to do well this season. And so from one new transfer to a player who's been at the squad for a few seasons now, Greg Doherty. Yes, the former Rangers man uh, retains at Hull City after having um, a fantastic season last season. Doesn't seem to be getting as much contention this season, um, considering we do have Jean Michael Sarri and Regan Slater, who are both very similar central defensive midfielders to Greg Doherty. But I think that he'll pick up a few more appearances as the season picks on and as the likes of them two will get more and more um, exhausted throughout the continuous build up of games. So, Greg Doherty is nothing to be um, dismissed away from yet. He's still a fantastic central defensive midfielder and a fantastic player that I just can't wait to see him excel even further um, in this new season, um, especially that partnership with him and um, Ozan Tufan in the central uh, of the park will be a fantastic pairing. I can already see that. You mark my words. And now the new transfer, Salah Eddedine Aulad Mahand. Yes, the Arsenal loan E coming in for one season with an option to buy at the end, making our, num our number 10 um, for the squad, if you want to call him that. He is picking up the number 10 shirts, of course. So yes, um, Salah Eddin um, Aulad Mahand is a fantastic player doing various different bits in the Premier League too over the past few seasons. He was originally at Feyenoord's Academy before getting a transfer to um, Arsenal's Academy back in 2019, I believe. So he's a fantastic player doing lovely, lovely manoeuvres on the ball. A very creative player, somebody that we've been missing out the squad and um, just can't wait to see him return from injury after picking up an injury with Arsenal. And from one newly transferred in injured player to another newly transferred in injured player, Dukan Sinek, who um, joins the club after having um, a few fantastic seasons um, around Europe and he's coming to the squad injured and um, picking up an injury, I believe, with the squad um, in the pre-season build-up. But he's a fantastic player. Just can't wait to see him break into the starting eleven, um, as he will be doing some very, very good bits, um, especially with that partnership of Ozan Tufan. I can see them playing off the backs of each other very, very well. Cynic is obviously um, a fantastic player who has been doing some man magnificent things um, in the past few seasons. I believe he's even got European, um, quali like European leagues. Um, with with his experience, so it's a fantastic player to pick up. Um, he's another one of these players that we think, what? How have Hull City picked up this player? Um, I just feel for the rest of the teams in the Championship, once he's back, fit and ready. And moving on now to another player who's been at the club for quite a bit of time, Andy Cannon. So yeah, he retains at the club again. Um, maybe should have been sent out on loan, um, or maybe completely transferred out, especially with a lot of the transfers in, in that midfield area. But I can understand why Schotter has kept him at the club, considering that we are lacking midfielders at the moment through our injury. Um, and Andy Cannon, he's an all right replacement. Um, I don't think he's very catered to this level. I can see more of a League One player rather than a championship player. It's obviously a big step up. Um, and he, he hasn't been performing the season so far. So I was quite surprised when we saw that it was keeping him um, once the deadline closed, but fair dues, shot has got away. Um, Andy Cannon staying at the club, um, unsure for how long, maybe going in January once we can get these midfielders back fit and ready and have our full midfield lineup. Um, but yeah, Andy Cannon stays at the squad. And another championship proven player who's joined the squad, Ryan Woods, joining us from Birmingham City. 
Um, I think he's had over 250 games in the championship, a fantastic milestone and also a fantastic player who is coming into the squad just from the first few games that we've seen him play um, ever since coming on away at West Brom. He has been a changing in that midfielder. Um, he's been playing balls that other players were afraid to play. He's been making things happen. Um, he came into the squad and I didn't think he was going to be this creative player. I thought he was going to be a very ball-moving player. So someone to get the ball from here to there without anything like really developing from it. Where it's been completely the opposite. He's completely gone against my expectations. After not knowing too much about him, um, other than the few times that he's played against us, obviously. Um, but yeah... He, he, He's just been doing magical things uh, from when he came on in the QPR game recently. He's been sending balls long. He's been making moves. Um, he has been really a shining light um, in the current midfield depth um, that is the injured midfield. But yeah, gets a little clap for me, Ryan Woods. And another player who's been excelling recently, Randall Williams. So after having a poor um, injury last season, cutting him out from pretty much half of the back, the back end half of the season, um, Randall Williams has made a few appearances this season, especially with the Carabao Cup. And he has been doing some fantastic um, plays. I think that we've really, really turned him into something great. Um, I just think a bit more game time, a bit more um, experience within this uh, full squad. And Randall Williams will turn into a player who who can do some serious damage um, through some of the defences in the championship. Uh, we saw some of it in the recent games in the league, um, obviously with the depletions of injuries. He's been really filling in on that right, right mid, right wing role. And he's been doing some serious, serious ball stuff. Uh, so just can't wait to see where he goes further in this squad throughout this season. And hopefully he can pick himself up some goal contributions as well. And yet another championship proven player that's coming to us uh, from Fulham, Jean Michael Serry. Yes, we picked him up from a treat, free transfer from um, Fulham after getting his contract, uh, his contract um, cut off. Uh, so the former um, Nice player who was once linked with Barcelona twice is now joy is now joined Hull City. Uh, he's had a few fantastic games at the start of the season. Obviously picking up that late minute winner against Bristol City. He was um, got an injury um, from the Preston game, uh, which has seen him out for uh, quite a few games now. But he's rumored to be back, um, if not this weekend, in the next few games. Uh, just had to see how the fitness team depends him on that front. But he's a fantastic player somebody who i think will really really um move this midfield onwards um especially playing in sort of the back half of the midfield area he's got that great vision he's got the great moves he can just do anything um that you want him to we saw it in the bristol city game if that's just one thing to take away from that game is the fact that we've got jean michael seri and that He's just going to be a game changer for us. I, I can see him already now being the reason why we go on and excel this season, if we do. But I do see us doing that with this squad. Uh, but yeah, Seri's a fantastic player who's fantastically joined the club. Next up is Callum Jones. Yes, he stays at the club um, after having a bit of a hit and miss season last season, playing uh, quite a bit of a uh, part in some of the youth levels. Um, I think he also went out on loan, but I might be mistaken on that front. Uh, so yeah, Callum Jones, he's really staying in the squad as sort of um, the same plot, the same reason why Andy Cannon's staying here. Uh, sort of like that backfilling, especially when we've got a lot of injury depletions as we do at the moment. He can come in and replace when needed. Moving on to all four of our deadline day pickups, um, all of them being in the midfield. First one, Adama Traore. Yes, we've been linked with him for about 70 odd days now um, after picking up an injury in training with the whole City squad. Uh, the deal went through yesterday and it does look like he um, will make an appearance before the December um, cut-off time um, for the um, World Cup. So he could possibly make a contribution before the January transfer window opens and that's why we picked him up before then um, rather than waiting off and picking up then. Um, obviously, he is still with the whole City squad. He's still getting um, the work done on him through the um, medical team, through the fitness professionals at Hull City. Um, and he's 
he's going to be a fantastic addition to the squad. Um, we've got him on a permanent deal as well, which is a fantastic thing because uh, I can just see him growing with the squad. Um, he's one of these players who will just build himself as long as as well as building up the squad around him, which is just fantastic. And we just can't wait to get him back from injury and get him into this lineup. Another signing who's coming on alone from Fenerbahce, Dimitrios Pelkas. Uh, he's another fantastic player. Um, a few people have been labelling him as playstyle like Dybala. Um, so yeah. I just can't wait to see him getting into this lineup. He is not injured, uh, which is a great thing. So can't wait to see him possibly getting a bit of game time this Sunday against Sheffield United. He's a fantastic player from the bits that I've seen. And I just cannot wait for him to dominate this league this season. He will be a fantastic player against these championship teams. The first of two were Chelsea loanees that we picked up yesterday uh, coming through their academy. Javier Simons, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, uh, coming to us. Uh, yes, the England Youth International and also Chelsea Academy player joins the club for a season-long loan. So he's another fantastic um, player who's been doing various different bits in the Premier League too, um, along with his teammate um, Harvey Vale. Yes, Harvey Vale comes to us through the same programme um, as uh, Xavier Simons. So two fantastic players who will definitely be coming into this squad and definitely make a positive impact. I can see that already throughout what I've been told and throughout what I've seen um, them contribute within the Chelsea youth ranks. Moving on to the attackers now, Ali Arsai Manesh has finally joined the club on a permanent deal after spending the last half of the season on loan at Hull City, making a few fantastic contributions um, and showing some real determination throughout the squad, even though just being on loan. Uh, but the deal was made permanent very early on, early on in the transfer window and aren't we glad for it? Although he is now out injured for quite some time after picking up an injury in the Burnley game with his hamstring, uh, it doesn't look like he's going to make an appearance until at least the World Cup starts. Um, um, so yeah, he's going to be out for a bit of time, but once he's back, he'll just light up again. He's a fantastic youth prospect and he's going to really excel at the club, especially with this permanent deal. Um, he'll be similar to Adama Traore, how he'll just grow with the squad um, and grow as a player. So it's just a fantastic addition to the squad. Um, one that we're glad to just make it a permanent deal um, with, with shots at Anna Jun's work. So Ryan Longman stays at the squad after making his um, loan move from Brighton a permanent deal back in January. He's still at the squad after having a bit of an injury crisis at the start of the season, picking it up in pre-season. He is now here um, uninjured and actually did start against QPR. Um, unfortunately, that was a loss. Um, but yeah, he's here for the game against um, Sheffield United as well. So maybe could make an appearance off the bench or maybe even start again. Uh, but he's a fantastic player. Um, I, comparing to that of only scoring screamers after his few goals last season, all of them being screamers, um, either outside of the D, top bins, or smashing it into the roof of the net from anywhere on the pitch. He's just a fantastic player. Can't wait to see him scoring some of these goals again as the season progresses on. And talking about goal scoring people, Oscar Estupinian, the current championship leading goal scorer. He's second only to Erling Haaland in my books. Uh, yes, the uh, Colombian international striker is um, doing some major business in the league so far, um, scoring um, seven goals. Uh, contributing in eight goals and making himself number one in the championship scoring list out of the uh, only players that have played so far. So it's a fantastic achievement that. Um, and I'll just go on and score even more goals as the season progresses. And scoring his first career hat-trick not that long ago. So yes, he's a fantastic player and he just will tear up this league. And I can see him now becoming the league's top goal scorer um, become the end of the uh, season and hopefully will lead us to promotion. And yet another goal scorer, Tyler Smith, picking up a goal in the most recent game against QPR. The only goal and breaking that clean sheet for QPR. So yeah, Tyler Smith, um, glad to have him staying at the club after there was rumours on a deadline day move to Barnsley. But that all fell through um, as it was not going to go anywhere. He's too, he's too good for Barnsley in my eyes. Um, he's a fantastic um, change up of a striker compared to the strikers that we do have at the club. 
Um, so he's a definite, definite play off the back of player and I can just see him um, going on and excelling in the league as a really like underdog style player um, after having some really good goals last season especially that one against Everton in the FA Cup and already opening up his goal scoring tally this season against QPR. And another player who's currently out injured, James Scott. So yes, James Scott is staying with the club, um, although he's currently injured and also spent last season out on loan. He was a little bit of a part of our promotion winning season uh, back in the 2020-21 season, uh, which was all, he, I think he got three or four goal contributions in that season, um, scoring three and I think assisted one. So um, a very, very well catered player to that level. We're not really seeing him do too much at this level, uh, but just can't wait to see him get back from uh, from injury and maybe see if we can work him into this lineup or possibly then ship him off in January if nothing works out. And then next is Big Benjamin Tete, the BT, the man who's assisted quite a few goals this season at, at, out of playing out of position as well, which is quite a uh, an astonishing feat. Yes, he's primarily um, a striker, but has been playing at left wing in that cam role um, for the parts of the season uh, that we've played so far with um, lack of players in that area but he's been doing a fantastic role uh, but you can't wait to see him get into that striker role and last up in the first team squad is a player who is out for the season unfortunately after picking up an injury against Coventry City at home yes it's Vaughan Coville so yeah, unfortunately he's out for the season um, after picking up an injury. I think it was a knee injury in that game. So unfortunately he's out for the season. But um, he seems to be a very, very um, good youth prospect that we picked up from Forest Green Rovers in this transfer window. Was originally meant to only be coming into our academy on a 21 side. Uh, but then after Shotter saw some bits, uh, he brought him up straight to the first team, playing a bit of, in, of pre season uh, with the first team squad and also making quite a few appearances with the first team squad in the league and also in the EFL Cup. So can't wait to see him back from injury next season, uh, see what he can do, uh, whether that just be for the under-21s academy side or even coming into the first team. We'll just have to wait and see on that front. Okay, so moving on to the departures now. We do have George Honeyman, who has left the club for a... In his eyes, big money move to Millwall. Apparently, he moved for the money. Um, he's worked out for him so far. I think he's picked up a few goals. Um, so, yeah, he's uh, he's moved to Millwall. He seems to be happy. And we have picked up some very good replacements in his place, uh, which is a very good sign. Festus Arthur has also left the club after not having too much of a contribution last season. Um, yeah, Festus Arthur has left the squad. Ahmed Salam, one of the um, good players from our promotion winning season um, from League One back to the Championship, has also left the club this transfer window, wishing him the best of luck. George Moncure, who got a few games in last season, um, looked to be something um, moving on through um, the career um didn't seem to be fitting in too much into the Hull City squad, has also left, uh, wishing him all the best at uh, Leighton Orient. Tom Eves' contract did not get continued through the squad, so he's now left and he's gone to Rotherham, where he said he's going to bag 40 goals in the Championship. Uh, he's currently not actually scored a goal yet in the Championship. So, yeah, wishing him all the best of luck. Eves! Tom Huddleston has also left the side for the second time in his history, moving on um, after the contract did not get extended to Man United's under-21 side, uh, going in as sort of a coaching role, um, but also playing. And I think he's also just made his um, recent appear league appearance in the um, EFL Trophy, the Papa John's Trophy for Manchester United. So good luck to Tom Huddleston. Richie Smallwood also did not have his contract extended as well, so has left the side and has gone to Bradford City. Um, unfortunately, beat it us in the EFL um, Cup, the Carabao Cup for some of you, and also picked up quite a good goal in the League 2. So good luck to Richie Smallwood. Key Lewis Potter being the biggest departure from Hull City this season, getting a nice big money move to Brentford in the Premier League. Um, getting um, a bit of game time recently, I think he's also picked up an assist 
um, his first Premier League assist, um, maybe in a goal. I, I know he's also got a goal in the um, EFL Cup, the Carabao Cup for some of you. So good luck to Keane Lewis Potter. Finally, Malik Wilkes, the thankfulness of leaving the club, getting a move to Sheffield Wednesday, um, which he was well needed. He's not catered to our squad. Uh, if you wanted to see more about that, go and check out my video about Malik Wilkes' departure, uh, where I really spill out all of my um, honest feelings about that. But yeah, Malik Wilkes has left the squad. Moving on to the low knees, now we do have Harvey Cartwright, who has gone out on a loan to Peterborough with Grant McCann, obviously being the manager there, wishing him all the best of luck for the season and hoping to see him back um, once the season is up. Another goalkeeper who's gone out on loan is Dave Robson. Um, so Dave Robson is out on loan for the season, wishing him all the best. I uh, didn't really seem to be making an appearance into the side after making um, an appearance in the EFL Cup um, against Bradford City. Uh, but yeah, wishing him all the best and hoping that he does a good season. Andy Smith is another player we sent out on loan, so wishing him all the best out on loan this season and hoping that he makes the whole city proud. Macaulay Snellgrove went out on loan in the early hours of yesterday, so wishing him all the best out on loan this season. And finally, Jevon Mills has left the squad out on loan till January. So that's it for this video. Make sure that you like and subscribe so you don't miss any other Hull City Fan Central YouTube channel content. This has been the Hull City Fan Central YouTube channel. Goodbye.